Oh, hi, I'm the heretic. Anybody watch the show Family Guy? You've definitely heard of it. The show was conceived by professional statheist douchebag Seth MacFarlane. It debuted in early 1999 and has since gone on to have over 300 episodes. For brevity's sake, I'll assume you all know about the show enough that I don't need to explain the premise. Which is to say, an animated sitcom about a dumb husband and his family, but I repeat myself. The episode T. Peter was brought to my attention. It aired on May 13th, 2012 as part of Family Guy's 10th season. In this episode, Peter Griffin joins the Tea Party. You all remember the Tea Party, right? The conservative protest group that spread across America, opposed to increased taxation, Obamacare, and the general disrespect of the United States government towards the Constitution. They were active in America from mid-2008 until 2012. Anyways, Peter joins a Tea Party, and succeeds in getting the whole city government overthrown and brings about anarchy. Wait, wait, what? You can already tell this is going to be a fair and realistic depiction of both the Tea Party and anarchism. Let's check it out. So the episode begins in a store. Peter becomes enamored by the We're Open sign and installs one in his house. And so, Peter just rolls with it. The Griffin household is now a business, for some reason. It's a comedy, so let's just keep going. Uh, what does that mean? I know Family Guy tries to be shocking, and pedophilia is entirely Herbert the Pervert's character, but eh, that's implied pedophilic acts. Something someone actually did rather than wants to? N no, that's not funny. And even if that's not what's being strongly implied, uh, let's be honest, the non sequitur isn't particularly funny. But anyways, we get a few more quirky scenes of Peter running his improvised business from his house until suddenly he gets into trouble with the state. Peter's business is being shut down because it's unlicensed. I'll go into the problem with licensing businesses later, but for now, know that this is the setup. You chose voluntarily to enforce the rules of a criminal enterprise called the state to stop someone whose only crime thus far has been to annoy his family. Sorry, Peter, but the crime lord makes the rules. I just enforce them. Joe, you are not innocent in this. The real problem here is that under statism, law is an opinion with a gun. For not complying with said opinion, the state escalates the situation until you either comply or die. It's common to think this is hyperbole because the reality of statism is kept from you by government schools and the media, but let's be clear, there's no law the police won't kill you for. But that's the setup. Peter is pissed because government shut down his home because licensing. So because he's been wronged by the state, he decides to join the Tea Party. Well, I mean, that makes a lot of sense, actually. And here we go with the stereotypes. In the days of yore, Brian was the voice of reason to the shenanigans of Peter and his family. Now his sole defining character trait is a smug, statheist asshole. Basically, he's Seth MacFarlane's self-insert, but I repeat myself. Remember this line, it'll be very important.
Even though big businesses make more money with government regulations and can only roll over people because of the state? A great example of this is the Interstate Commerce Act of 1887, which cartelized the railroad companies in granting them land grants and subsidies, something that they couldn't do for themselves in the vague semblance of the free market that existed at the time. There was also the Federal Reserve Act of 1913, which cartelized the banks into a central bank, the eponymous Federal Reserve. By creating a safety net in a lender of last resort, the Fed takes the threat of bank runs off the table. This threat is a crucial signal banks need in order to act with discipline. And by act with discipline, I of course mean don't expand credit until the freaking currency loses 98% of its value, you stupid assholes! So no, Seth MacFarlane, I mean Brian, big businesses want big government because they can't roll over people without it. The premise of this episode's argument against the Tea Party is fundamentally flawed. So anyways, there's a Tea Party rally in town, and Peter, Quagmire, and Joe showed up, even though Joe's never expressed interest in going. Some more filler and cutaway gags later, the reveal is that the local Tea Party chapter spokesperson is a millionaire industrialist Clark Kenting as a blue-collar guy, more specifically, Peter's father-in-law Carter. Thus, validating Seth McBrien's claims. Luckily, this is an animated show so the narrative doesn't have to worry about pesky things like reality when espousing propaganda. And then this happens. Gotta love that uncomfortable fourth wall break where Carter's laughing at you, specifically, dear viewer. Wait, what the hell? Abolished government? That was never what the Tea Party was about. The Tea Party formed in 2008, in response to TARP, where the government bailed out big financial firms to the tune of hundreds of billions in response to the 2008 financial crash. People hated the idea of paying for others' financial mistakes through their taxes and started a movement to oppose excessive government spending in favor of lower taxes and making the United States government more compliant with the United States Constitution. Although the morons in the Democrat Party like to portray it as such, the Tea Party was never a partisan movement. In fact, it was never even an anarchist movement. Ever. This bit in the show isn't even hyperbole. It's played completely straight. If you want to use reducio ad absurdum to take people you disagree with's ideas to their absurd logical conclusion, then at least make sure the conclusion you're coming to makes sense. Satire needs to be based in reality. Wait, why is Joe in the crowd? He's a cop, so if we're going off of the episode's own logic, he's protesting to get out of his job. The show's logic isn't even internally consistent. I still can't get over why Joe is with them, trying to get out of his job. But note they want the city government shut down. The city government. This will be important later. Also, remember when Peter said this? Which is it? Take back government or take it out? Pick one. If you want to say Peter's goal changed from then to now, then when? Show us when. At no point did Peter go from a small government conservative to anarchist. Even a cartoon where anything can happen has to be internally consistent, or else it's just random nonsense. This whole thing started because Peter ran an unlicensed business. Even if you aren't an anarchist, you don't need to get rid of government to get rid of licensing laws. All they do is give unfair advantages to big businesses who can afford licensing requirements and restricts competition. Yeah, you know that's not what would happen if actual anarchists marched in a government building. It'd be a lot more explosive, with more firefights. This is just meant to trick your emotions. 
to put the state, the organization that steals from you, restricts your choices and throws you into a cage for not complying with their opinions with guns as the victim. No. Just no. Family Guy, take a long walk off a short pier. I'd comment something about the state and federal government still being in effect, but this episode doesn't care about consistency, so why should I? Also, the Tea Party weren't anarchists for the last time. But now that the city government, including the state and federal governments, for some reason are gone, we can see what contempt talentless hack comedy writers have for anarchism. Yeah. I'd comment something about the state and federal government still being in effect, but this episode doesn't care about consistency, so why should I? Also, the Tea Party weren't anarchists for the last time. But now that the city government, including the state and federal governments, for some reason are gone, we can see what contempt talentless hack comedy writers have for anarchism. Ugh, what is it with the pedophilia jokes? I can't take it anymore. They shut down the city governments. The city governments. Literally all state and federal regulations are still in effect, you morons. The Holocaust and pogroms were periods of mass lawlessness. Freaking Nazi Germany had no government, according to this episode. I hate misinformation, but now they're just insulting my intelligence. So anyways, other bad stuff is said to happen because anarchy. No, no really. We're just expected to believe that our society will just devolve into chaos at the first sign of the absence of a coercive authority. That there's no economic demand to have things done that were previously done by the state. No economic demand for utilities, civil protection, or even road maintenance. Ugh, it's bad enough that these morons have to misrepresent the Tea Party, but they have to misrepresent anarchism too. Don't worry, all we have to do is give rich people, preferably rich lawyers, the ability to have goons with guns force us into obeying their holy commandments. We'll call these rich lawyers, eh, politicians. Then, we know for sure that they'll definitely be looking out for us. We promise. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on a second. There's a shot of Carter's house, and it's not being targeted by the looters and chaos in the streets. In fact, he's perfectly fine. But uh, how can this be? The only reason that he has managed to come out of this unscathed is because he has armed security keeping looters out of his property. But why would armed security take his money and do their jobs without a government requiring them keep their contracts? Huh, this is weird. It's almost as if people don't need a coercive monopoly to work and do business together. Therefore, this one wide shot of Carter's house completely undermines T. Peter's own basic premises about how society would function without the religion of statism. Something Peter realizes when he says that people have to rely on each other, and it's time to make things right. Clearly, the sensible thing to do is to form private security companies to sell protection for people willing to buy it, if only to restore order, after which entrepreneurs will offer services the state previously provided, except it'll all be paid for voluntarily. I mean, that's gotta be what he's doing. Oh, what am I saying? Of course he's gonna try to recongregate the religion of statism.
Why can't we make rules for ourselves? We do it all the time in our interpersonal relationships. Have you ever been to a Minecraft multiplayer server that didn't have rules? Also, I don't want people who win a popularity contest to make rules on my behalf. They won't make rules I want, they just make their own rules. If these things are important, then nobody should give money for it, because they pay for it voluntarily. Lord, how many times do I need to make this point? If you need people to pay for something by force, then nobody wants it. That's not a solution since the bastards have essentially free reign to do whatever they want until the next election. Even if they are bastards, well, Ted Kennedy killed the girl in Chappaquiddick, tried to cover it up, and then got re-elected to the Senate for the remainder of his natural life. Even if elections did work as intended, that's still a band-aid on the gaping wound called giving sociopaths the power of legitimized violence. If people are willing to pay money for a civilized society voluntarily, then you don't need a coercive monopoly. This episode's pretty much over, which is good because I've had all I can take. There is effective and good political satire out there, but satire needs to be grounded in reality, and in this regard, T. Peter already failed the first test. This whole thing was a slander of the Tea Party to deliberately misrepresent them as anarchists, and Brian McFarlane can't even represent anarchism right. This whole thing was full of stereotypes and pedophilia for some reason, all in an attempt to use this cartoon to lie to people about what a serious status political movement was and what they wanted. I'm not even sure of this episode's purpose. It aired on May 2012, when the Tea Party was already fading out, so they were essentially beating a dead horse here. You want to satirize the Tea Party? Make fun of their use of colonial costumes or, I don't know, their signs. You could even tell jokes about the participants and the kind of people who would be interested in joining the Tea Party. You can joke about how hypocritical it is for people who preach self-reliance and pulling themselves up by their bootstraps spend all their time protesting rather than working at real jobs. At least, those have some grounding in reality. Also, make sure your narrative isn't contradicting itself. I shouldn't be able to debunk your entire narrative from a single wide shot. Just saying. Maybe people who already had an intense hatred for the Tea Party might have enjoyed it, but for everyone else, this was a weak showing from an already weak season. Season 10 featured the episode Seahorse Seashell Party and Screams of Silence, two episodes that routinely make it into top 10 Worst Family Guy episode lists. While Tea Peter isn't as, well, horrible as those, it's still a propaganda piece and a bad one at that. Brian McSeth should have been ashamed to allow this crap to go on TV, knowing that it was misleading people. Did nobody take Seth aside and go, maybe we shouldn't deliberately strawman our political opponents? No, that would require them to have a spine. And they definitely don't have that because they don't even have a brain, because otherwise they could write a comedy cartoon that actually tells jokes! Questions? Comments? Critique? What are your thoughts on Family Guy, both past and present? Anything I should be concerned about? Support me through Patreon and Ko-Fi. Like, share, and subscribe to become a heretic today.